Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of building the buyer's house in Lego. All right, so this is part two, and starting off this week, I've got a sick brickling haul, so hopefully I can get some great work done this time. So let's get this thing open. All righty, we got some plates, grills, slopes, tiles, plates, plates, little tiles, plates, tiles, slopes. We have some black elephant trunks, vines and tentacles in the upside down, claws, and some pieces to finish off the lettering. There we go. So, I'm gonna get into a time lapse right now of me building this, and hopefully it's gonna be sick. All right, so getting right into this time lapse, first thing I'm gonna be doing here is I'm going to be taking off some of the tiles that wouldn't really match up, and I'm putting in some new tiles I got so I can fill up that whole background to the Stranger Things logo with the black tiles. I actually made a mistake and I forgot to add the clips so I can add the lines in the end, so I ended up taking off some and having to put them as back. So that's what I'm doing here while I'm taking those off. I actually couldn't work on the letters for too long because I was waiting on some other pieces that were coming in another Brickling call. So I decided to start working on the ground for the upside down. I made some long blue beams and then I started putting on the plates for the back. I started working on the side rock work on camera but then I stopped the time lapse and I built the rest off camera so that's why you see it finished over in there in this next shot. So what I was doing here is I was just working on putting some upside downy details on the front. Then I decided to start working on the other side of the sided rock work. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the plates on so that I can bring that rock work back as you can see what I'm doing right there. It's actually pretty hard to get this rock work sturdy because you can't have plates on the bottom and it's hard to build into there once you've got it connected so I needed to build it separately before I connected it and I used the Technic pins to put it right into the back there. To make the rock work I just used kind of long curved slopes that you can see me using there and that made a really nice angle that I really liked going back there. And right here you're gonna see next haul I got. So getting these pieces in allowed me to finish the letters and get those all kind of more completed. You can kind of see how I put the letters together using the pieces that I just have in the time lapse, but later in the video I'm going to have more of an in-depth look at how I made one of the letters, so you can see how to make those. So then I went back to the ground of the upside down using the wedge plates that I got in that first brickling quarter. Now these plates were actually pretty hard to put on because these plates were what was going to make the ground sturdy but it was hard to put them on before the ground was sturdy, so I needed to keep flipping it over and turning it back over to actually get this secured on. Then I had to get all these plates in there, and you can see me just flipping it over, turning it back over to try to get it more sturdy. After I got those brown plates on, though, it got pretty sturdy, so then I could just start putting on more plates like that, although I still flipped it over to get those plates stuck down a little better. So now I'm back to working on that side rock work that I didn't quite finish before. You can see I was using the Technic bricks under it and kind of layering them, placing like logs in a log cabin, kind of crossing, and that just added a lot of stability and sturdiness. Then I started adding these vines for the upside down and those dark blue plates. And after I started doing that, I pretty much finished up the whole thing, and then I was ready to put it on the side. So here are the pieces needed to make one of those R's from the Stranger Things logo. You can kind of just see me putting it together here. They're pretty much all made with just red one by one bricks, red one by one plates, and curved plates. You can just see how it all goes together here. And with these pieces you can pretty much make any red letter you want or whatever color you want. Then you connect it using the back of the headlight brick. Just goes right onto that jumper plate right there and then you can just build on top of those headlight bricks as you can see I light there. And as you can see this is the perfect height to get them all pretty much as close as you can get to being even with each other and I think it looks pretty good making the R and the S on the front and the back a little bit bigger than the other ones. So this right here is kind of the piece of gold for these letters. I need a lot of them to fill up all the fronts of these headlight bricks to make it look better because I forgot to order them and I cannot really find any of them in my collection. I think I used them all, so that's kind of a dilemma. Hopefully I can get that solved. So now it's time to put on that side rock work. I had to build up that back wall a little bit and put another Technic brick because those Technic pins only line up a little bit of percent of the time. Here are the four Technic pins right there and then they're going to go into those back Technic bricks there. So you can see it was actually really hard to get these Technic pins to all go in there. As you can see I'm having a lot of trouble right now 
I don't know if you guys have experience with trying to put four plus Technic pins into one wall, but it is not that easy. As you can, I'm having just a lot of trouble right now and I had to keep taking them out, they would come out. And also it wasn't an even surface, so I had to have it elevated a little bit, but eventually I did get it as you can see here. And then I just connected them into those um, bricks with studs on the side and it was all good. So this is the final product. As you can see, the letters look great as far as I got them finished. On the sides, you can see all that upside downy looking foliage on the sides, all on both sides, and it looks pretty good. So hopefully in the next segment, I can get the next layer of the regular world's ground up here. This is what I'm pointing to right now, but um, that's for another time because I don't have the pieces ordered for that. Here's the ground of the upside down. I think it looks really nice right now with those wedge plates, especially on the side over here where it's all matched up perfectly with this side rock work and I think that looks really good. So I think that's gonna be it for this episode. Might have to wait a little bit longer for the next one since I haven't ordered pieces yet, but bye.